Hi, everybody. Good morning and good afternoon. Um, thank you so much for joining our webinar today. Uh, my name is Sarah Reed, and I am a program manager at the Electrification Coalition. Um, you can send me an email or a chat if you have any issues during the webinar. My email is sreed, R-E-E-D, at electrificationcoalition.org, um, or you could send me a message in the chat. Um, please keep yourself on mute and go ahead and put any questions that you have during the presentation into the chat box on the bottom there. Um, we are recording this meeting and the link and slides will be available following. So thank you so much and I will go ahead and turn it over to Jared. Yeah, thanks a lot, Sarah. Um, like Sarah said, uh, you know, thank you everybody for, for joining today. Um, we have a couple of uh, folks that are on the last week's uh, webinar, and um, you might see a couple of uh, familiar slides in the first part here, but just want to make sure that we get the word out uh, for, for everybody that, that is new. So um, again, thank you so much for joining, and I'm really excited to introduce uh, Chad and uh, George, for our, uh, our vendors. So Chad is with uh, Global, George is with MADVAC, and um, we'll, we'll get into uh, some more of the specifics and some really exciting uh, offerings that were, are, are now available to uh, the Climate Mayor's Collaborative um, or uh, Electric Street Sweepers. So with that, I'll go on ahead and, and, and jump in here. Um, so just a quick agenda. So uh, George, Chad, welcome. Uh, and uh, we're gonna dive into the Collaborative a little bit, give a few updates, and then um, we'll hand it off uh, to uh, the respective vendors to uh, discuss their, uh, their offerings. Um, so, just a little bit really quick uh, about, about the Electrification Coalition. Um, to the right there, just a couple of the um, programs that we're working on currently and uh, have worked on previously. Um, so our work is nationwide and uh, we really are focused on uh, reducing uh, oil dependence and uh, really finding the best opportunity to, uh, to really electrify everything as it turns out now. And so we're not just working on light duty uh, electrification, um, mostly for city fleets, but we're also obviously branching out into um, to, to all things uh, uh, electric transportation. Uh, really exciting, some, some of the new work that uh, we're working on uh, really started at the end of last year and, and really we have a big focus on this year. Uh, these these uh, states here listed, Nevada, North Carolina, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Virginia, we're really focused on accelerating uh, electrification um, focused policies. And so EV first policies really at a state level and then uh, working down uh, into, into the cities within those states to really find the best opportunities to, to assist these states and cities within uh, to electrify their fleets and to really sort of act as a, uh, a catalyst to drive further uh, electrification within the, within the space. Um, it's important to, uh, to hit on our partners, and so the, what we call the collaborative, the Climate Mayor's EV Purchasing Collaborative, is made up of uh, really three, there's three-legged stool there. It's uh, Electrification Coalition. Uh, we're acting as the technical advisor, um, having been in this space for uh, over a decade at this point. We have a lot of experience and a pretty deep bench when it comes to um, really assisting cities uh, with a broad electrification uh, strategy and so we can we can really leverage that to uh, assist uh, the climate mayor cities which are a group of over 400 cities counties uh, municipal agencies uh, public agencies universities at this point that are really focused on um, sustainability and reducing carbon emissions and are a part of of this uh, this group that we call uh, the collaborative and then of course sourcewell which is a huge uh, aspect of the whole program Sourcewell is great. Um, they are the contract administrator. They're doing, um, they're able to vet all of the contracts. And so um, they allow us to offer uh, the ability to not have to go out to bid for some very technical uh, equipment. And um, they really reduce the administrative burden and they're a huge aspect of, of the program and um, very, uh, very critical um, part of all of this. So some of the things that we're focused on for uh, reducing uh, the barriers to uh, access electric vehicles, we're looking at uh, increasing the procurement choice. So obviously right now we're, you know, we're gonna be focused on electric street sweepers. We're able to 
um, you know, take, take a broad look across the industry and see what is available and, and uh, we can really work with the best of the best when it comes to accessing uh, this technical kind of equipment. Um, so obviously, like I mentioned before, working with Sourcewell, we're reducing that administrative time to access these uh, new technologies, aggregating this national demand, allowing everybody to access uh, vehicles and equipment that might not be available in all states normally. Uh, we're able to make all of this equipment available to everybody, um, as well as helping to work through the, the planning part of it to avoid any common pitfalls that might, um, might present a challenge to cities that are not as familiar with uh, running electrical equipment um, and uh, transportation as well. So, um, and then also obviously we're, we're able to uh, help with the charging stations, similar to the vehicles, um, you know, we're able to get uh, better pricing. All of that is also um, competitively bid already. So it allows cities to, and counties and uh, public agencies to avoid having to go out to bid. So that's a big deal. Um, again, we, we have been in this space for, uh, at the Electrification Coalition for uh, quite a while, since 2008 actually, um, working to help cities uh, to, to really drive uh, electric vehicles. So we're able to... Uh, we've got some folks that, uh, put, put your uh, video on mute, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, so some of the things we do, we're, we're able to analyze current fleet um, usage. We can use telematics and all, all manner of um, data points to identify the best opportunities to electrify fleets and to implement those electric vehicles. And um, we were able to uh, work with, um, obviously, light duty, heavy duty, medium duty uh, vehicle vendors. And of course, today, uh, electric street sweepers, uh, which is pretty uh, pretty awesome that we're able to to start working in um, you know in in the different uh, in the different areas. So we're able to assist with identifying all of those opportunities. Just a couple quick screen screenshots here of our website. I would uh, ask if everybody uh, if everybody would check out driveevfleets.org if you haven't seen it yet. Um, this is our website. These are just a couple of uh, couple of different uh, features on there. We're able to compare vehicles. We can look at uh, costs of the vehicles and really figure out what is the best opportunity, um, you know, what, what makes the most sense in an application to transition to electric. And then obviously as well, you've got uh, buses out there and uh, street sweepers and uh, charging stations. Um, so just some quick, uh, quick numbers here. We've got 200 uh, cities, counties, ports, universities, and transit agencies that are committed to uh, procuring electric vehicles and equipment. Uh, that goes out through 2021, so that's just this year and next year. Um, within that, you can see that we've got 3,150 light duty electric vehicles committed to the program, which is huge. This is really sending a, a message to industry. Um, you know, the, the desire is there. Uh, cities and counties and public agencies have identified ways to save a lot of money, you know, especially these days there's uh, some Real, real concerns over budget constraints, and um, we can really help to zero in on how much money can we save, and uh, what what can we do to to maximize the cost savings, whether it's through fuel savings or uh, maintenance savings, and then also, of course, there's an environmental aspect and a uh, an oil dependence um, reduction aspect as, as well. Obviously, using uh, significantly less um, of, of that resource. And then uh, to date, we're at 1,604 light duty EVs procured through the program, um, which is a, a really a big deal and something that we're very proud of. And that is uh, a testament to all the hard work of our, our, our partners. So um, we're, we're excited about that. And that number continues to go up. Um, really quick, just some uh, quick note to the uh, vehicle and charging station options. So we've got a uh, number of charging station vendors there, and actually we also have Clipper Creek now as well, so that's a new one that's exciting. And just a quick kind of uh, screenshot, just to kind of summarize some of those vehicles that we do have on offer. And um, the price that's listed out there, that is the straight purchase price, so the direct purchase price for those vehicles. Um, and again, kind of one of the exciting things that is, is unique to our program is we're able to offer vehicles that are maybe only available normally in Lev Zev states or in California, 
across the board. We can access uh, all of these vehicles across the country. So that's a huge benefit there as well. Um, so obviously the, the, uh, the, main, the main attraction today, uh, street sweepers, really excited about these really cool options. Um, they're quiet and I'm really excited to uh, start getting into, um, you know, a little bit more of the technical side of it and um, sort of uh, start getting ready to hand it over to, uh, to Chad from uh, Global to kind of start talking about uh, their product. Um, before, I, before I do that, we have uh, the ability to access the federal tax credit really quickly for vehicles. So we're able to have a uh, reduced purchase price for any of those vehicles that are listed out there. Um, we're able to uh, leverage the federal tax credit, reduce the cap costs, and a big thing, especially now that I really want to hit on, we can defer payments for up to a year. So obviously, you know, in light of COVID, there's some real concerns with budgets. Um, this is a great option there. And then also the leasing option is, is huge. And that's something that is available uh, for both of the vendors that are on this webinar. We're able to set up financing options and uh, we're able to allow our, our, our uh, city budgets to not, uh, we're, we're able to, instead of uh, piling a lot of our, of our cash in uh, at the outset, we're able to kind of conserve some of that cash and spread that cost out over time so we can shift it more to an operating uh, type expense rather than just a, a huge hit to uh, upfront capital. So um, with that, I'm gonna actually, we'll uh, hand it over to Chad. I'm gonna stop screen sharing Chad and then I'll allow you to uh, go on ahead and, um, and take over. Absolutely, thanks everybody. Uh, appreciate everyone getting on. Um, I am going to try to get a screen share roll and let me know if you see it. Is it working there, guys? Yep, I see it. Perfect. Okay. Um, I'm going to run through this. I, again, I appreciate everybody getting on. Uh, just a little bit about Global. Global Environmental Products is a street sweeper manufacturing company. We're based in San Bernardino, California. Um, quick look at the outside of our building there and uh, gives you a good overview of the type of equipment that we're building. Um, Global specializes uh, primarily on the purpose-built chassis single engine design. So the three machines that you see actually sitting out in front of the facility are are three versions of mechanical sweepers. And with the electric equipment that we're currently offering today, um, the, the mechanical sweeper is the only version that, that we are doing in full electric. So um, a, a broad overview of our equipment would include vacuum sweepers, regenerative air. But again, today we're, we're, uh, we're gonna focus on the mechanical because that's the only version that we're building in a mechanical or in the, uh, the electric design. Um, in, in terms of, of other alternative fuels that we've done for, for a number of years, um, Global does the, the M3 and M4 uh, CNG versions, compressed natural gas. Uh, for New York City, for uh, a number of years now, we've actually built and provided an M4 diesel electric hybrid sweeper. Uh, for the state of California, they're actually testing a zero emission um, uh, fuel cell machine as we speak down at, uh, at UC Riverside and then of course we get into the the three and the four wheel mechanical sweepers all electric okay um, picture that you see that just popped up is actually uh, the all electric sweeper four wheel design that had been delivered to uh, Department of Sanitation in New York City um, they they uh, really spearheaded this project with us and and and, and forced the R and D to be done. Um, this is a class seven sweeper, so class seven means twenty six thousand GVWR or greater. Um, this thing will pick up and run up and down the road at at speeds of anywhere from you know forty five to sixty miles per hour. Um, again, a project driven by New York City. That's that was their machine. It's out there. And uh, I think that they're just in the testing stages. Um, obvious advantages uh, that we're getting from the electric machine would be um, the elimination of the CO2 emissions, uh, improvement of the quality of life for both the operator and uh, citizens, um, reduction of overall sound emissions. We rate that at 30%. In all actuality, it's it's more than likely greater than that. When we're building these machines, believe it or not, uh, we have to put all of audible alarm systems on there notifying people that the sweeper is coming down the road because uh, it operates very quietly. 
Um, the ease of maintenance uh, is, is a big improvement over the, the typical sweeper. Um, they do come with self-diagnostic systems on them. So they, have a, they actually have a computer on them that uh, is, is tracking the efficiency, tracking the performance of the electric side of the machine. And then uh, we do work with a system and be through uh, you, wherever you're at, your local internet provider, where we have the option to actually do uh, more of a Wi-Fi uh, uh, on-site uh, our remote monitoring, I guess, is what I should say for you. Um, their lower maintenance costs, uh, we're getting a little, uh, getting rid of a lot of the hydraulic motors, hydraulic pumps on the drive systems. Um, gets, we get rid of a lot of the preventative maintenance that's done with the engines. And uh, another benefit would be the reduction of the total cost of, uh, of ownership, uh, which would allow the quicker amortization uh, on your investment. Um, this is just kind of giving you a general overview of the makeup of the electric system that's on the machine. As you see, we typically we're building these machines with hydrostatic transmissions. We're actually removing the, the hydrostatic uh, motor that's in the machine, replacing it with a 120 uh, kilowatt electric traction motor. Um, we are using a 180 kilowatt lithium ion battery system, and we have the option actually to go up to a uh, 240 kilowatt hour. And then uh, you're going to notice the, the 20 kilowatt uh, charge system that's actually on board the machine. Um, no engine, no noise, no heat, no DPF filter, no more uh, PMs for the oil changes, hydraulic system, uh, coolant radiator to clean, and fuel filters. Uh, the Battery life on this thing is estimated up to 10 years at this time, and then you'll see that we're showing an anticipated battery efficiency loss of 15%. Uh, the life expectancy at this time, and again, this is in test, and everything's operating, we'll, we'll see how it goes as we move forward, uh, but the motors would be about three to five years is what's estimated. Uh, the work autonomy uh, with the three-wheel sweeper at 180 kilowatt hours, is uh, nine hours of operational time on a charge and then with the four-wheel sweeper we're looking at 11 hours of operational time uh, and that would be with the, the 240 kilowatt. Um, we are using a level two uh, SAE 772, 1772 uh, charging system as standard and you can actually see in that picture on the right hand side where the, the onboard charger is actually just built into the fender. You'd, you'd plug in just like you're fueling up at any kind of another fuel system. Um, just a quick specification on the charge system itself. It would be hardwired, installed indoor or outdoor, and uh, using a, a 240 supply circuit, 240 volt supply circuit. The track and traction system on the sweepers, it's, we're using a conventional rear axle driven by the electric motor instead of the hydrostatic. Uh, it's an asynchronous alternate current motor type, and the power is 120 kilowatt uh, drive power on continuous duty. The electronic control is done by an inverter with torque control. Braking system is disc brakes all the way around on the sweepers. Um, parking brake is just like we do on the standard machines, drum brake on the rear axle. Uh, there is regeneration and this is in test at this time. It looks like the regeneration we're getting out of the braking is anywhere from three to 5%. And uh, just a general overview actually of the actual battery system. Uh, by the way, if anybody would like this, I'm, I'm happy if, if uh, you shoot me an email. I'll convert this to a PDF and I can just email any of this information to you. Um, and then just some of the benefits we're seeing. Actually, this, this Unomia Research and Consulting uh, is a group out of the UK. They actually do have a base in New York where, where they actually did testing so far with uh, refuse collection vehicles. And, and again, these statistics are coming out of the UK, but we expect that actually to, you know, we'd, we'd see bigger advantages over here in the US just based on population. Um, they're, they're estimating right now, obviously, that uh, they can reduce uh, greenhouse emissions by 290,000 tons uh, of carbon dioxide annually by, by switching their, their refuse collection fleets. This isn't sweepers, but this is information that we had at hand. This is a, you can reference this in Ditching Diesel, a cost and benefit analysis of electric refuse collection vehicles. Um, Second thing is, again, we keep getting back into the lower operational costs, and they're estimating that, uh, again, on refuse collection vehicles, you're going to see a reduction of 40% uh, to the diesel equivalent, and, uh, and it just simply has to do with, with uh, the uh, removal of the engine and any kind of PMs that would be tied in with that side of the system. 
Um, Global uh, works with, for as far as cooperative pur purchasing contracts that we are on, Global has all the electric machines listed on Sourcewell. We are on the HDAC buy in Texas and uh, the uh, one of the current, and I think they use this nationally in a lot of places, is the Minnesota Department of Transportation. So we've got all these electric machines listed on those contracts available for purchase. Um, the grant programs that we've had some of our contacts uh, actually uh, reach out to us about, and it looks like uh, it looks like they have these avenues available to them, would be to use uh, funds from congestion mitigation and air quality. Uh, and each state, I believe, has their own own a CMAC program that they can actually access. And then uh, the second that we've seen, and, and this, uh, from what I understand with this trust, this is released in phases, um, is the Volkswagen Diesel Emissions Environmental Mitigation Trust. And, and that varies uh, for availability by equipment, I think, per state. Um, that is what I have as a as just an overview of the product. As I mentioned, if you look at the last page, my email address is on there, cborman at globalsweeper.com. Um, feel free to shoot me an email if I can give you more information. If you have questions that you want to answer that way, I'm happy to do it. Um, as far as existing users, we do get that question a lot. So far in the U.S., New York City is driving this project, so they have the machine out there, but we have built the three wheels and actually shipped them overseas into Tokyo, Japan, and they're in operation over in Tokyo. So uh, we, Global does have a demo machine that we intend to do a, a big marketing program with that uh, will be available probably within about the next 30 days. And uh, we'll reach out to you if you'd like, because we're gonna, we're gonna travel the machine around the United States uh, and do uh, kind of a satellite launch in different locations, and we'd be happy to invite you over to take a look at it as soon as we can. And that's it. Thanks, Chad. That, yeah, that's uh, great. Very, very excited to, to see the, all the uh, progress that's, that's going on there, really exciting. Um, I did have a, a couple quick questions to, uh, that I wanted to throw out there uh, before, we, um, before we move on. Um, I, I noticed that you, uh, I was actually really excited to, to hear this one, when you and I first started talking about this a couple of months ago, um, that you're utilizing just the standard J1772 plug for charging on that, uh, on that unit. And uh, so that's really nice, you know, um, for a lot, of, a lot of cities, they might already have a charging station that they can use that they're already using for their, their vehicles. Um, I did have a question though, is there any, any thoughts uh, about possibly doing like a battery swap, uh, kind of a functionality on that? Uh, on that unit to, to have continuous runtime? Um. Uh, it's, we, not at this time. We, we haven't actually discussed doing that at this time, but we're in the, in the early stages, Jared, at this point. Yeah. Right now is what they're looking at is ultimately battery life, and then we've got the cost set aside if they were, you know, to, to basically run into loss and, and replace the battery system itself. But I, not that I'm aware of that they're, that they're that, that far ahead yet on the battery swap. Here. Okay. Yeah, it's still, still pretty early on in, in that technology. Yeah. Um, we have another question about the, what about uh, direct current fast charge? So DC fast charging directly into the battery, is that a possibility there? Um, it, it's, it, it appears that it is, but again, it's, it's, uh, it's too early at this point. I, I think that it is some, well, I know that it is something that they're taking a look at and something that they're, they're getting into, but not available at the moment. Okay. Yeah, yeah, good to know. Very cool. Um, well, that's exciting. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, you're hitting on what I get really excited about. We got the, the reduced noise pollution. That's huge. Um, I've been getting a lot of uh, a lot of questions. You know, we've been talking to the cities within the collaborative. Um, you know, there there that seems to be a concern that they've been getting a lot of requests about. So that's a huge um, huge benefit. And then, of course, reduced maintenance. So you've got the TCO and then uh, reduced pollution. Um, so yeah, really, really pretty cool. What about uh, any V to G um, ab ability? So uh, back to the grid. So is there any way to store energy in that battery to go back to the grid or? Um, I don't know that answer. Sure. I'll find that out for you. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. great. No, I really appreciate it. That's, uh, that's, that's fantastic. Really excited to be able to uh, be able to offer these through, uh, through Sourcewell and the collaborative. So. Absolutely. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks. And I'll go on ahead and uh, share the screen back. Of course, if anybody has any questions, of course, please feel free, throw them in the, in the chat or, um, you know, feel free to, to go on ahead and ask. 
and um, you know, we can definitely, we'll definitely get into it. Um, so I'm going to go on ahead and uh, with that, we'll, we'll go on ahead and we'll, we'll shift gears over. Um, so I'm going to, there we go. We'll hand it over to uh, George from ExproLink MadVac to uh, discuss their option. It's a little different and you know, it's really nice. We're able to offer um, a, a variety of solutions to, uh, to cities and counties and public agencies uh, on, that, on that front. So um, I'll hand it over to you, George. All right, great. Uh, good afternoon uh, or good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to be speaking with you today um, about the LR50 electric litter vacuum vehicle. Uh, Chad, by the way, uh, thank you and uh, congratulations for your great presentation. Very interesting to hear what you're doing and the exciting things happening at Global. Um, on our end, um, I'd like to share with you a little bit about our company today and then dive into the LR50 electric, which I can speak with you about. So a quick uh, overview of MADVAC. Uh, the MADVAC name has been in existence for over 30 years. Uh, in 2011, the company XProLink here in Montreal acquired the MADVAC product line. And uh, since that time has been manufacturing and distributing all MADVAC products uh, around the world. All our units are built here in Montreal, Canada, where I'm located. And of course, it gives us a great advantage uh, with regards to some of our competitors who are overseas. Of course, we're talking here in the compact litter vacuum and sweeper category. So because we're uh, located in North America, we are one of the few, very, very few, with all the vehicles built here, and we're very good in terms of quickly being able to turn around and ship parts. Uh, our company is financially supported by one of Quebec's largest investment, investment funds, and uh, which is fantastic for us because it is going to play a key role in the coming years as we're working hard at electrifying our entire product offering, uh, which is the target that we've set ourselves to achieve. Uh, in 2018, we also became a SourceWell awarded contract vendor, which has been very, very important for us in terms of uh, generating growth, particularly in the US. Uh, and SourceWell is becoming more and more uh, a critical component to the success of our company. Uh, we have a network of established, well-known dealers located throughout the US uh, and Canada. Um, excellent organizations with good reputation that carry uh, the top lines in outdoor cleaning and other uh, categories. And the result of all of this is that today, roughly 70% uh, of our uh, sales volume is actually generated in the US, uh, which is fantastic for us and uh, gives me the opportunity to travel extensively throughout your wonderful country. Uh, at the bottom of the slide, you see some of our more uh, recent customers that have bought different MadVac vehicles, and we um, are very uh, motivated to growing that list of customers much, much more uh, in the years to come. Um, in case you don't know, MadVac is the company that invented the very first small mobile vacuum vehicles uh, back in uh, 1987 uh, with the MADVAC 101. Uh, so none of this existed before, but this was the creation of MADVAC. And 20 years later, uh, in 2007, the line was upgraded with the introduction of the MADVAC LN50 and LR50 litter vacuums. Last year, we uh, introduced into the market our very first uh, all-electric vehicle, the LR50E, which is basically the LR50, but now electric instead of with a diesel engine. And this is what I'll be sharing with you uh, today. Just a side note before we dive into that, in case you don't know, um, in the market of compact litter vacuums, uh, our main competitor is a very well-known company, which I'm sure you've heard of, Tenant with their uh, ATLV 4300. In case you don't know, 
um, at the end of last year, uh, the company announced that they were discontinuing the ATLV 4300. Different people have told me that manufacturing was stopped, officially stopped, as of March 31st. It's not confirmed. I heard this from different sources. But I can tell you that recently, on the tenant website, the ATLV was removed. And so this vehicle, um, which uh, was our main competitor in this category, uh, is no longer around. The uh, product that we offer that most resembles the ATLV is the LN50. And although I won't be presenting that today, uh, it is important to note, as indicated on the slide, that next year, the LN50 will be available all electric. So we will have the diesel and the all electric to uh, offer out there in the market for anyone that is either interested specifically in our equipment or is looking to replace maybe an existing ATLV that they have. Uh, our other compact litter vacuums include the LR50 diesel, the LR50 electric, which uh, I'll be showing you in a few minutes, the LR175, which is also a litter vacuum, but a, a bigger machine, and also our LS175 sidewalk sweeper. If you'd like to know more about any of these machines, simply go to madvac.com, where you'll be able to see video brochure and everything else uh, on our units. So uh, with that said, let's go to the next slide and talk a bit about the um, LR50. So the LR50E is an all-terrain compact vehicle. Uh, its characteristics, it's easy to operate. It is very safe to drive in crowded areas. You do not need a, a special permit to operate this machine. And of course, it comes with fully uh, street legal lighting. The, from an efficiency point of view, uh, the machine will allow you to collect litter approximately six times quicker than manual picking. Um, you'll be seeing a video of the machine in a few seconds, and while you see the machine run, you'll say, gee, it, it doesn't seem to me like it's picking up litter six times faster than a manual picker. But in reality, when you look at the actual job of picking litter um, over several hours, you know, the, the effort of doing it, walking, you know, just the, the environment and everything, it's more of a long-term thing. And overall, from start to finish, let's say within a work shift, uh, if you send someone out to do the picking manually versus this on a machine, uh, you'll, you'll have six times uh, more litter that will have been collected. It, it's operated with a lithium-ion high-energy uh, battery pack. Uh, you have, it says six hours of autonomy. It's actually six to eight. It really depends on usage, how often the fan is actually on during the whole shift as you're operating the machine. And what's great about this small unit is that it could be uh, charged directly uh, onto 120, 240 volt uh, standard wall socket, which you'll see uh, in the video. So if you want, Jerry, play the video and I'll, uh, as you watch the video, there's no sound or music. I'll just throw in a couple of comments here and there as you have a look at the unit uh, in action. Sounds great, thanks George. Yeah, really interesting to see that you can just plug it right in uh, to a standard wall outlet. Yeah. I'm gonna go on ahead and we'll uh, grab the video here. All right, maximize. Can you see the video? Yeah, I can. All right, there we go. Okay, so here's the machine. 100% electric. Diagnostic screen right over here. Oh, okay. Um, so here you see how easy it is for the boom to be able to move around using the six position joystick. So no physical effort to displace the boom. The way the machine operates, you start off by simply loading a collector bag inside the container. This machine is going to give you a litter storage capacity of 100 to 120 gallons of compacted litter, okay? So very easy to load. As I said, no CDL permit required to operate the machine. Seat belt, push a button, 
and you're ready to go. The boom has an eight inch diameter uh, opening to collect basically pretty much all types of conventional city litter. City litter. Uh, clearly you can use the machine in many different environments. This particular shot here shows you, uh, you have about 240 degree movement. You're really able to collect litter very well around the machine, roughly about six feet away from the machine. Clearly we're talking here about an all-terrain vehicle, fantastic for parks and other areas. You'll notice how small the machine is. It is only 48 inches wide, so you can run this on a sidewalk. And again, its capability of collecting litter is excellent. You have 2,900 CFM. Um, I think the video jumped a little bit, it doesn't matter. Um, the battery pack, I don't know if it's a connection with my computer, but the video is playing slower, but that's the battery pack that you see underneath the seat. These are the two chargers at the bottom of the screen. You have rear, rear, rear wheel drive propulsion. And over here, you're looking at the power distribution unit or the master control board that distributes the energy from the lithium ion batteries. We prepared the video so that it gives you even thoughts uh, of locations where you may even want to consider using this type of equipment. Notice how it can collect litter in hard to reach areas, bike lane, sidewalk, park. And of course, right now we're in the middle of the COVID uh, period and in many uh, large urban centers, you can clearly see uh, a fair amount of masks and gloves and what else all over the place. And so with a unit like this, you're able to easily drive around and remove this type of litter. I was uh, talking at the beginning about uh, hand picking litter. You, again, you can see how well the machine works. Uh, it can collect litter that's dry, humid or wet. So if the litter is wet, no problem at all. Syringes, which you see here, very uh, frequent, unfortunately, in many parks. Uh, can easily and safely be removed. We're working on a specific project on that with the city of New York. And again, the all-terrain characteristic makes it very interesting. You have two chargers here. Uh, as I said, 120, 240 volt standard wall socket. Uh, charging the machine this way, if the batteries are completely empty, it's gonna take approximately 10 hours. We can also accommodate for other types of charging methods. Uh, so as, a, as an end user, if you have a particular method that you would prefer, something more aligned to a vehicle, we can accommodate and incorporate that in the machine. As shown here, you can see you can run this machine indoors, obviously, because it's all electric. So no oil, hydraulics, spills. Um, as Jared said, much less noisy than uh, uh, the diesel counterpart. You can also use the 15 foot uh, extendable wander hose for all of those hard to reach areas, which is fantastic because it complements uh, the work that the operator is doing and allows to access litter in all those areas that the machine can't necessarily reach. For example, here underneath a, a tree close to the trunk, maybe the vehicle won't be able to get through so easily. So it's an excellent little litter collector vehicle for source while customers by the way the approximate cost depending on options for a machine like this is roughly a hundred thousand uh, dollars the diesel version is approximately seventy thousand so it gives you a bit of a view uh, of what you're looking at uh, in terms of cost you'll notice the 48 inch wide vacuum head at the front of the machine you also have the capability of just plugging the boom to the front of the machine and the driver is simply just driving and collecting litter uh, at the same time as you see uh, right over here. And again, as I said, um, all those areas that tend to be heavily littered, this is the application for this type uh, of small vehicle.
So we're excited to sell it uh, and have it available all electric. As I said, the sister product of this machine, the LN50, next year will be available all electric. At the end of the day, you simply lower the rear portion, pull out the uh, bag with your litter inside, and you're done. That's great, George. There's just something so satisfying about watching this unit uh, vacuum up the litter and just and clean up parks and sidewalks and, and everything. And um, really, really excited to be able to share this with everybody. So yeah, that's great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, my pleasure, Jared. And I'll say this, uh, all our product line, including the LR50 electric, uh, we are a complement to all the bigger pieces of equipment that municipalities or others will use. So our small machines, their vocation is to collect and clean areas that the bigger pieces uh, of equipment don't necessarily, they can't access or reach. So that's our niche. This is where we fit in. And um, this is our line of business. So thank you everyone for your, uh, your time and attention. That's one of the one of the really nice things about having, um, you know, both Madvac and Global on is you're both addressing a, a different, um, you know, a different niche within within the category, and um, you know, really can cover all all bases. Um, any any idea or any calculations or projections on uh, TCO like reduce reduced maintenance, uh, anything uh, reduced fuel, anything like that to to hit on. Well, we're, I, I cannot give you definite numbers uh, today as we're talking uh, because we're in the process of um, collecting this information. Mm -hmm. uh, just so that everyone knows, uh, here in Montreal, the city of Montreal, uh, our biggest customer, has a fleet of 80 LR50 diesel. Their plan is to convert their entire fleet to our new LR50 electric. They bought 18 of our LR50Es, the product that you just saw, which they received just before winter time last year. So we're working with them. They, I mean, winter came around and it, it was impossible for them to really have several months of usage to be able to really collect, in my opinion, the data that would, that would answer the, the question you're asking. But we are working with them now again. And so we're in the process of, um, going through all of that but clearly you saw the easy access to all of the critical components of the machine uh, no oil hydraulics uh, the maintenance as chad said in his presentation these are much simpler machines to take care of and also like the global uh, equipment uh, our technicians have the ability to hook up and communicate directly with the unit no matter where it is around the world uh, through the diagnostic screen in the cab. And so we're able to collect a lot of data uh, and really assist our customers with their equipment. So we feel that uh, it is going to be a much easier uh, piece of equipment to manage and maintain. And clearly it is going to have a significant impact uh, in terms of maintenance cost and preventive maintenance and all that kind of stuff. Fantastic. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And, you know, that's, that's really just the beauty of, of uh, electrifying everything is, um, you know, we have a, a simpler, simpler electric motor. Um, you know, like, like you said, like Chad said, you know, we don't have that sort of preventative maintenance, um, you know, certainly that you would have on a diesel. Um, you know, like I said as well earlier, you know, we, we offer school buses, uh, soon to be transit buses through our program as well. And, you know, just like the vehicles, um, we're always looking at, you know, what is that time to, for, for the payback? And, um, you know, a lot of it is just, it, it's wrapped up in the maintenance, um, you know, to figure out that the calculation. Absolutely. And you know what, at the end of the day, over and above the equipment and the business side of thing, it's nice to know that we're putting out there in the field uh, equipment that is much more environmentally friendly mm -hmm. than, uh, you know, the classic conventional diesel or other type of uh, um, engine. So I, I really look forward to the progress that ourselves, Global, and other players are making in that area. Uh, I think we all have a vested interest in uh, protecting the environment and uh, our company is committed to that. And this is why we're uh, working at electrifying our, our entire offering because we really believe that we all have uh, uh, somehow or other a role to play in all of that. So uh, we're excited. 
Fantastic. Fantastic. Thanks so much. If, uh, if folks want to reach out for more information, um, I've got up here on a slide, we've got George's information here with Madvac, and of course, uh, we've got Chad's information here with Global. Um, so we are approaching our 45-minute uh, uh, time frame here, just uh, kind of wrapping up, unless there are any other questions. Just kind of curious to hear from, from both of you if there are any uh, anticipated uh, delays in production or anything like that associated with the ongoing COVID situation or, um, you know, sort of some kind of a timeline or anything like that for for order to delivery, um, just to kind of set that um, to set that standard. Uh, Jared, Jared, from our end, um, the early on we were worried about access to the batteries and receiving batteries, but uh, the supplier we're working with now is actually manufacturing those in the United States, which has simplified things a bit for us. Um, some other components like random things like hydraulic cylinders and things like that are actually backing up a little bit but for the most part um, it's business as usual for us and and we should stay you know right on right on track with with uh, our estimated lead times that's great yeah glad to hear it yeah uh, on my, on my end uh, before the four months uh, since covid uh, it has doubled to eight months, which I know is a little bit far off, but um, there's a couple of reasons why, and to basically keep it to a very short answer, uh, yes, we've had some supply chain uh, challenges, but what's also happened is that um, in spite of COVID, um, we have picked up on a, a couple of uh, very, very uh, uh, interesting suggestions that the city of Montreal has brought to us to bring the equipment uh, to another level in terms of its performance capability. And so, uh, yes, we have a supply chain issue uh, that we are uh, trying to work through, but at the same time, we are re-engineering a couple of elements of the machine. Uh, and I know that the, uh, the, the delay is maybe a bit unfortunate, but knowing what we know and what we're doing, we're very excited about what's going to happen soon because um, the, uh, let's call it the, the next phase of the LR50Es that will be coming out um, of our factory are going to be that much better than the first units uh, that we had uh, delivered with the city of Montreal. They're aware of all of this, we're working with them. They're an excellent partner. And um, so that's the answer for you. And uh, we look forward to delivering uh, fantastic equipment. Wonderful. Yeah, certainly very reasonable. And, um, you know, that's, that's a big part of all of this is, is, you know, getting it out there in the world, trying it out, seeing what can be improved. And, um, you know, it's, it's great to be affiliated with, um, you know, uh, two, two very uh, longstanding and, and um, you know, uh, high quality uh, vendors such as yourselves. And, um, you know, it's really great to get the word out. And I'm excited about this sort of next phase and uh, branching into um, you know, really offering more electric equipment and, um, and, and it's great. So if anybody has any questions, of course, uh, we'll go on ahead and start wrapping up. We've got our information here. Feel free to reach out to me directly, or of course, uh, you've got our, um, our, our uh, great uh, vendors here as well to reach out to. So uh, gentlemen, thank you so much. I really appreciate the time and, um, you know, especially the past couple of months working with our team and, and myself to kind of get up to speed on, um, you know, what it is that you're offering and the capabilities and, uh, you know, really the benefits there. So it's exciting to, uh, to get the word out. So thank you so much. Thanks, Jared. Thank Thanks, Jared. Thank you, George. And thank you, Sarah. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so much.